Hey everybody, this is the 10th year of this channel existing, and in my 10 years of doing home performance and building science for a living, I've been focusing, just like everybody else, just like I was trained, on physics. This is what home performance has been for me for the last 10 years. Heat flow, airflow and pressure, moisture, and air quality. All of the things you see here are based in physics. That is one branch of science. It turns out that we all have been completely overlooking another half of the story. Air quality being the most important element, air quality is very dependent on physics, but it's also dependent on chemistry, which is something that no one who does home performance and building science has been very educated on, or has even had a clue was important. The home chem experiment that Grace and I went and filmed so much material for showed us where we were dead wrong. So one easy way to demonstrate this for you is in house wraps, these new smart membranes and tapes. As you know, if you've seen me build, I'm a big fan of the 475 High Performance Building Supply line of materials. You can see Intello, which is an intelligent membrane installed on this dry vault and on the tiny lab and on the upcoming build that we're gonna do here. I left it exposed on the ceiling of my dry vault because I like to be reminded how building materials nowadays can help solve really interesting issues that we've got in home performance. However, I have been telling people for years that this awesome material, which is awesome, is airtight but vapor open. And when I happen to mention this to these world-class chemists at Home Chem, they give me a response that I was frankly not expecting. So, the idea that a water molecule is somehow smaller and gonna get through some surface more easily than an air molecule is that, really odd to me as yeah, a chemist. That, that makes no sense. Because most of the air that we're breathing is nitrogen and oxygen. So nitrogen is two nitrogen atoms put together. Oxygen is two oxygen atoms put together. Water is an oxygen and two hydrogens. They're all on the same size, same ballpark. scale, same yeah. ballpark. So if one's gonna make it through, the, the others other are gonna will. get it through. Unless you're using chemistry to, to as block. a barrier instead of actually the, the size of the holes. Is it supposed to repel things that act like water? Is it supposed to repel things that act like oils? So polar versus non-polar. It's still, I would consider it airtight. From a chemistry standpoint, it's not airtight. So. When you do a blower door test, you're thinking about 50 pascals, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's the lowest pressure you're really concerned about. When I build a mass spectrometer, we're talking about pressures a million times lower than that. From an engineering perspective, it's, it's about tight. what works. Yeah. And about what works for the question you're asking. Mm -hmm. But from a chemistry perspective, any molecule that's in the gas phase, there, there are lots of them that will still be able to pass through. It's but about they're, your time they're not scales. the ones that you're worried about yeah. on the time scales that you're worried yeah. about. Yeah. Drywall, for example, is going to stop a lot of the gases that mm -hmm. one might be worried about making it through. Uh, so you might have some foam behind your drywall that is made out of some molecules that you don't want to be breathing. And that drywall is going to do a pretty good job preventing those molecules from getting through. But does it mean it's completely impermeable? Mm -hmm. No. Those molecules, that water, those, those that formaldehyde, it's still gonna slowly Going permeate through. through. Yeah. It's just gonna take a really long time. 